Hey guys, it's Lionel here and I'm back again with another video. In today's video, I want to teach you about what sentence mining is, why you should sentence mine, things you need to sentence mine, things you should note, and how you should go about sentence mining. For those who are new to my channel, this video is part of an ordered playlist that teaches you step by step to go from knowing nothing in Japanese all the way to fluency. So if you want to check out that playlist and learn how to learn Japanese by yourself independently, just go in the description and you can find the full playlist there. For those who already know the drill, let's recap. Those following the AJAP method, which is all Japanese all the time, we have more or less completed learning Kano, learning Kanji, setting up our listening immersion environment. I've even helped you set up your Anki to learn Japanese, your SRS system. And now we're moving on to the main step, the longest step and the most enjoyable part of the whole process, which is gathering those 10,000 sentences that will get you to fluency, AKA sentence mining. So I hope you're excited. For those following this refold method, we have just finished stage 1C and now we're moving on to stage two, which is building comprehension, more specifically, sentence mining. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get straight into the video. So what is sentence mining? Sentence mining is the process of taking words and sentences slash phrases from your immersion and studying them using a space repetition software such as Anki. If you really wanted to, from day one, you could start sentence mining and disregard everything that I've told you, such as going through the Genki 1 and Genki 2 textbooks and going through the Core 2000 deck. But personally, I'd recommend you first go through the Core 2000 deck, learn your hiragana and katakana, your kanji, and go through your Genki textbooks, and then you start sentence mining. And I'll explain why I personally recommend that you do that later in this video. So remember this, later in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you should start off doing everything that I've told you up until now, then you start doing sentence mining. By studying words and sentences that come directly from your immersion content, such as the anime you watch, the shows you watch, the books and manga that you read, you ensure that you're learning only words and sentences that are relevant to you and your goals to learning Japanese. Whether that's just to be able to understand romantic comedy anime or play your favorite games in Japanese, or to be able to work in an investment bank in Japan. Since you're learning words and sentences that you want to learn yourself, you'll be able to build a stronger and deeper connection to these sentences and words, and also build stronger memories with them and therefore be able to memorize them much more quickly and easily. Sentence mining is a creative process and as time passes by and you continue sentence mining, you'll each, each and every one of you will be able to just come up with your own methods of how you go about sentence mining. But for now, as for this video, I'm just going to teach you the most basic way to sentence mine and how I personally sentence mine. So, why should you sentence mine? Learning individual sentences are far better than learning individual words and grammar rules. This is because the sentences that you mine are not only a set of words that are ordered correctly according to grammar rules, but they also come with the added benefit or giving you the sense and the context in which those words are being used. This is important because there's no point in you learning the meaning of a new word without actually knowing how it's going to be used or misusing it. Here's a very basic example. If I told you the word hajimemashite means how do you do? Or maybe you read this in a textbook or a dictionary or whatever. And I didn't tell you anything else. You'd probably go around to every single person that you know and don't know and just be like to them, Hajime Mashte, Hajime Mashte, thinking that it means how do you do or how are you, like in English, which is actually the incorrect usage of Hajime Mashte. You're misusing it. But if I gave you a sentence that was like, Hajime Mashte, Rainer Tomoshimas. And I told you the meaning of this sentence is something along the lines of um, Nice to meet you, my name is Lionel Because Hajime Mashte is in the context of a sentence And after the word Hajime Mashte is um, Lionel Tomoshimasu, which means My name is Lionel You'd most likely go around and start saying that sentence that you've learnt 
to people who you've never met before or you've just met for the first time, not your close friends. Why? Because Hajj Mimashta is followed by my name is Lionel and you wouldn't go to your close friends or people you already know telling them, oh, my name is Lionel because they should already know that. You would actually just only say it to people who, who you are just meeting for the first time. And that is the correct usage of Hajime Mashte. You tend to use it with people who you've just met for the first time, not with people who you're close with. And by learning it in a sentence, you've increased your chances of getting the correct usage of it, and you've got a better understanding of its meaning and how it's used. Another reason to sentence mine is because, like in any language, many words have similar meanings, and sometimes, words even translate to the same word in English. They may have similar meanings, but they're not exactly the same. And the difference between sounding like a native and sounding a bit off is based on your ability to be able to use similar meaning words very correctly and in the right context. Here's another simple example. The words place and sight. They have more or less similar meanings. However, take these two sentences. The first sentence is, this morning I went to the building site and spoke to the workers. The second sentence is, this morning I went to the building place and spoke to the workers. For anyone who's a native speaker in English, you know the first sentence feels good and is correct. And the, sentence, the second sentence is actually a bit off and feels, mm, doesn't sound right. Even though place and site have similar meanings. And those are just a few reasons why sentence mining is beneficial and why you should sentence mine rather than study individual words and grammar rules. If you want more reasons, you can just find those on the AJAT website or the Refold website and you can go do some deeper reading there. So the things you're going to need to be able to sentence mine, you're gonna need a computer, you're gonna need a spatial petition software such as Anki. And I've already showed you how to download and set up Anki in my how to use Anki to study Japanese video which is in the playlist linked below in the description. You're going to need immersion content that you're going to sentence mine from. So it could be manga, anime, Netflix shows, and so on. You're going to need something that's going to allow you to record audio from this immersion content. And my previous video before this video already showed you how to record audio with ShareX. So you can go back and watch that video and then set it up and you can come back and learn how to sentence mine. And then you're going to need a dictionary. I'll show you the dictionary that I use in this video. And then an extra optional thing you're going to need when sentence mining, this is for those who have Netflix, is something called Language Reactor. And I'll show you how to set it up in another video if you guys really want to. But you don't necessarily need this, it's just something that helps. If you don't have Language Reactor, then you can always just use Animalon, which is a website where you can watch anime and it gives you subtitles that you can copy and paste language reactor allows you to like copy and paste webs um copy and paste subtitles from your favorite anime and shows on netflix and on youtube okay now let's move on to how to sentence mine so when it comes to sentence mining you need to make sure that you're not sentence mining every single sentence that you come across during your immersion you need to make sure that you're only sentence mining sentences that will bring you the most benefit and the sentences that you need, you know, and make sure you're not learning too many new cards daily. So I'm going to give you those criteria right now. So with these criteria that I'm going to tell you, you need to make, when you're going to sentence mine, you need to make sure that the sentence that you're about to mine meets either one or more of these criteria. So criteria number one, the word feels familiar. By familiar, I mean, you've heard the word used multiple times during your immersion. The word might have even been heard by you multiple times before you started learning Japanese and started actually immersing in the Japanese language or your target language. For example, some of you before even starting to learn Japanese, you probably heard the words baka or onichan, you know, and without actually opening, it, opening up a dictionary, you already know the meaning of these words which is idiot slash fool and also older brother. So words like this that feel familiar to you, you want to sentence mine these, you know, to grab the easy fruit, you know, the easy low hanging fruit. Criteria number two, 
the word is accessible. By accessible, I mean that when you search up that word's definition in a dictionary, the, the definition is easy to understand and you grasp it straight away. It's nothing too hard. If the word's definition is hard to understand and doesn't really make much sense, just skip it. It's best for you to spend your time learning things that you can easily understand their definition and you'll gain the most bang for your buck than spending time on words that you can't fully understand their meaning. Sometimes you just need to just skip it and then maybe later when you have more knowledge and understanding of the Japanese language as a whole, then when you come back and see that word again, it will just make sense to you. Criteria number three, you want to learn the word. If a word seems interesting, or it just seems to be calling out to you like mind me mind me then i recommend that you go and sentence mind that word words like this they have a deeper emotional connection to you and will have also memories associated with it making it much more easier for you to memorize and much more easier for you to understand even though the word may not be part of the most common frequently used japanese words or even the most useful to you but it's best to just learn them anyway because at the end of the day they are Japanese words and they will help you in some shape or form in terms of whether it's through expressing yourself or just understanding what other Japanese people are saying. And the final and most important criteria, and I probably should have mentioned this first, is the sentence that you're going to mind has to be a 1T sentence. 1T meaning one target. It is best practice for you to mine sentences that include one element that is unknown to you slash what you don't understand. By an element, I mean one word or a grammar structure. That's where the whole name one target comes from or one T. That is this one target word that you're trying to learn that is unknown to you. And everything else in the sentence you understand already know. You don't want to go sentence mining for sentences whereby there's more than one word that you don't understand. Maybe let's say there's three unknown words. That's not really good practice because imagine if you just mine a sentence and it has three new words that you don't know. And so on the back of the flashcard, you're putting the de dictionary definitions of those three words. Every time you go to review that flashcard, you need to pass three criteria. You need to understand and be able to read word number one, word number two and word number three and if you don't meet all three of those criteria if you for, for example able to recall the meaning and reading of the two words two of the three words and you fail the third word you know you're gonna fail that card what's better is for you to just make three separate flashcards which have sentences where you understand everything apart from those that one individual word that's new to you and therefore if you can't remember the one word you fill that card and the other two words will be passed because obviously they have their own sentences and therefore you're going to be, end up doing less review that's more efficient and quicker now to make sure that these criteria make more sense to you let's move on to my computer so i can visually show you how you'd go about sentence mining okay so here we are we are on my laptop and so when it comes to sentence mining, when I'm on my computer, the first thing I normally do, open up my Anki. And here I've already prepared three, I think three or four different pieces of content, my immersion content that I'm gonna show you how to sentence mine from. So what I tend to do is that first I'll add a new card, right now my thing's in Japanese, but you just click the add word or button on Anki to add a new flashcard. I'll minimize this. So obviously you will choose again from my Anki tutorials, the, the card type, this card type. Then you'll select the deck that you want your sentence mining cards to go into. Mine sentences for YouTube. And what I tend to do, get my Anki, put it on the left, get my emerging content, put it on the right. Boom. And then the thing you're going to need, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna need obviously your dictionary I use Jisho and then you can also have your translator so I use something called DeepL I can link in the description if you guys want um, I don't use Google Translate because Google Translate is trash DeepL uses machine learning I think and it's better just gives you better quality translations so I use that then you're gonna have your immersion content I have this for you Death Note a Japanese YouTuber playing games Apex 
I've got a manga and then I have Netflix. So let's start off with Death Note. So what you'll do, you'll sit there, you're doing your active immersion, you're sitting there watching the anime. So you click play. And then obviously you're listening to the content, you're looking out for, you know, one T sentences. Sentences that, you know, contain one word that you don't know. So we listen. Oh, so I'm going to pretend that, you know, I understood everything in that sentence apart from one word. So what you can do on this first website, which is Animalon, if you don't have Netflix, it comes with subtitles. If you see here, subs, you can choose whether you want it to have Hiragana, Katakana, Japanese, Romaji, English. So then what you can do, you can load the transcript, which are the subtitles here, and I'll show you all the subtitles. So what you are then going to do is that that's early, the earlier line, he said, So we're going to pretend that I didn't know the meaning of this. Mijika. So what you would then do, you'd copy the sentence, the, the, the subtitle or the sentence, paste that into the expression field. You know, uh, control, when I press control V, when I press control V, it pastes the green stuff. So what you can do is that you can just do control shift paste, which will just paste it as a normal text. And then what you do on the meaning side, what you can then do, you go to your translator. If you want to have the English translation on the back, you can just go in your translator. You can press that paste it into translator. It says, no, it's best to avoid people close to you if it's possible. So you copy the translation, put it on the meaning side, enter, enter. Then the one word we didn't know was this word, Mijika. So you copy that, paste it into your dictionary, paste and find out the meaning. Now what is the meaning of this? And it's in context. Oh, so it means near to oneself, close to one familiar. So what I then tend to do is that I'll just put the word here. Then I'll put the, in brackets, I'll put the, I'll put the hiragana, I'll put a dash and then I'll put the meaning. Copy, paste, boom. And then if you like, get your snippet tool, put a screenshot of the scene, paste it in the image section and obviously we want our audio so what we then do is that we do control i put alt a those who don't know how to record audio go to my previous video about how to record audio but those who already know how to record audio and have the application share x we then now press the button our hotkey okay now we've captured the audio paste it in the audio section so that is our first sentence mind flashcard you know got the japanese on the front english translation and then the one target word that you're trying to that you don't understand on the back with its meaning and then the audio and then a screenshot of the scene if you want and that's what we do and then we just click add to add it to the deck then we move on to our next piece of content this is a youtuber now as much as possible, I would recommend that you guys consume content that has Japanese subtitles so that you can know that what you're typing into your Anki is exactly what is being said in the anime or the YouTube thing or whatever. If you don't have subtitles, if they don't have subtitles, then it's going to be kind of hard. You might end up putting in the wrong thing that they're saying, you know. But so let's take this in now. So you're watching a YouTuber, Japanese YouTuber now. Press play. So that's what he said. Um, so in this case, there's no subtitles, but I know that's what he said. I could hear it. So then let's pretend that I didn't know. I knew everything what he said, apart from the word kibishi. So, you know, what I'll then do is then I'll just go again. 
I'll type it in because obviously I haven't got subtitles to copy and paste on YouTube. So ni jubyo. Ni jubyo seconds. What chotto kibishi. So ni jubyo wa chotto kibishi. And then we copy the word that we don't know, put it into dictionary. Then after the multiple definitions. So what you can do is maybe you can just put it in the translator to double check. Deep L is very good at translating. 20 seconds is a bit harsh. So it, gives, it even gives you multiple translations that sound much better in English. That could be better options. So I think the one that makes more sense here is 20 seconds is a bit tight. In this context of the video, what the person was saying is that because his banner is um, got 20 seconds left before he can, it disappears, uh, he was just trying to say that it's going to be a bit tight for you to get his banner in 20 seconds, you know, because it's about to run out the timer. So that's I know the context of this video. So obviously you would know the context as well if you're watching the whole video and understand Apex. So then obviously you put this, again you do, you just do that, 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 put the hiragana in brackets, kibishi, brackets, dash, and the meaning we take is going to be, uh, let's say hard to do, difficult, tricky. Yep, that's a good translation of kibishi in this context. You know, this is where, this is the good thing. like. As I was saying earlier, um, you know, cause words can even have different meanings like this. There's one that means severe. There's one that means hard to do and tricky and tense. You wouldn't know which meaning is being referred to, you know, and because there's mo multiple meanings in the dictionary, it's just going to be hard like for you to understand and use the word correctly in the right situations. That's why sentence mining helps because you can learn the different nuances of the word kibishi or the word you're trying to learn through context and through watching an immersion. So in this case, obviously the meaning it is hard to do and trickle, difficult, tricky. Then we take a screenshot of the situation as usual. Paste the image in. Then we just rewind back. And then after we just do record the audio. Paste that in the audio section. And that's your flashcard done. Like the previous one, click add. You know, those with Netflix, if you get the language reactor, I can make a video on how to set it up. But language reactor allows you to access the subtitles of the show you're watching. So um, we've got this anime, again, you're watching, immersion. Okay, so that's the sentence we've heard. So what I can then do, I'll be like, okay, I want to mind this. This sounds like a good sentence I want to remember. With language learner, was it language reactor? I forgot the name of the add-on, but it's la language reactor. You can then go to access the subtitles here. This is the sentence I want. I just copy it, paste it into Anki. And then I can just record the audio. So what I do, then click play at the same time. So then you then paste the audio into the audio section. So she said, she said something along the lines that I feel like I believe that I can change my life by myself or something like that. Uh, that's the screenshot of the scene. Let's assume that the one word I didn't understand in the sentence was this, kairu. So then now what I'll do, go to my dictionary like the previous one, search up. You know, change, it means to change, copy, paste, that in the back. Get the word. 
put the hiragana the reading here kaeru dash boom you want the english translation if you want you don't have to put the english translation because this goes back to my point earlier the reason why i told you that you should learn the 2000 core vocabulary and also go through the Ken genki books is because when it comes to sentence mining because you're looking for sentences that have one target one word that you don't understand it's going to be quite hard for you to find sentences that have one word that you don't understand if you don't already know some words in the japanese language if you try to sentence mine from day one finding a t a one t sentence is going to be near impossible because you literally don't understand anything but if you learn from genki and your core 2000 deck the words watashi jinse jibun you know koto dekuru omo and you know that you learn from the genki textbooks as well that you know the sentence the grammar structure wa de ga and all of that then it's simply just learning the word kairu here in the middle you know and that's your one t sentence but if you literally didn't know if you didn't do what i told you before sentence mining you'd end up in, it's impossible for you to sentence mine it's possible but it's going to take a long time so you can speed up the process by doing what i've told you earlier called thousand deck genki books so that's why i recommend doing what i told you before sentence mining um yeah so you get the translation of the sentence put it in, in the translator i believe that you can change your life yep paste that or oh, since it's Netflix, they should put their own definition here. So if you choose, which, you can choose which definition you want. You can use a Netflix definition, which is here. It says, "I think fate is something you can change," or you can just use the translator, which is more a more direct translation. You know. Uh, yeah, and you just click add. That seems done. Boom. That's using Netflix, and then. We have the last thing which is you know a manga so you're reading your manga you want a sentence mine okay let's read so it's like you're reading your manga and you can read some stuff and you come across a sentence that you don't understand you understand but there's one word you don't understand so you're reading it you're like okay anna kawaii ko koko ni itake oi masaki warui na inemuri moshikashite ore no sei ka so um, let's assume that you don't know the meaning of se. You know, so again, what you would do, you type out the sentence, this bubble here, your sentence that you're mining, you know everything else. What do you know? Inamuri, moshikashite, ore no se ga. I think he's saying something along the lines of, oh, my bad, is it my fault that you're dozing off or falling asleep? Something like that. Um, so let's, then again, you put in translation. I'm sorry, maybe I'm the one who nodded off. Is that? I don't think that's the translation, but you know, sometimes the translation's off because the, the, the translator may not know the context, so it doesn't make sense. But in this situation, this doesn't make sense so you obviously just be like it means my bad is it my fault that you're dozing off you know and then you just get the word um sir what does that mean put in a dictionary um, there's multiple meanings, but you look for the right one that makes most sense in this context. Oh, here it is. Right here. So obviously, that's the, def the meaning of say, but blame. See, some things can't be directly translated, hence why you've got consequence, outcome, result. But in this situation, it means to blame, sort of. like So is it my fault, basically, the meaning of say? You just put say there as your target word, say. And you just get the screenshot of the manga scene. Let's 
screenshot that put that there this will have no audio because it's a manga scene so you then that's it and just click add that's the flashcard done you make bold the word the, the correct meaning blame click add and now we have showed you how to send it to mine from you know different resources animalon youtube and netflix now i'm going to show you how um the flashcards look like let me just close this down so if you go to our deck mine sentences for youtube we go to review them look so now the first sentence will ask you it will ask you to read the sentence so obviously you'll be like yeah yeah mijikana ningen wa narubeki saketa hou ga ii na um there you go so you've got um the audio there as well and the translation the screenshot so you click good if you read it properly and you read again Click good. And then, you know, make sure you can say it like the audio. Um, and then there's no audio. And so on. And then the audio cards are also there. Um, so if you want to look at the audio cards. And those will come in in your reviews as well. Um, yeah, so that's how you sentence mine. And then you just do your reviews as usual, learn the sentences and you just keep doing that. You just keep sentence mining, learning new words, put them into Anki, reviewing them and so on. All the way to fluency. Um, I can show you guys what my earlier flashcards when I started starting out sentence mining look like. Just to show you that I've come a long way as well. Um, so if I just show you preview my earlier flashcards. So this is a flashcard from the Genki book. Very basic, just one phrase with the meaning on the back. But if I click through them, you can see them improve over time. So this is from the Genki textbook as well. If you click through them, they were kind of trash. Um, these were made a long time ago. If you can see the date, the date is I made these flashcards in 2017. You know, then there's 2018. If I preview those. Just phrases from the Genki textbook. Phrases, phrases, sentences, sentences, sentences. From the Genki textbooks. Sentences, sentences. This is the first set flashcard I made. Sentence Man flashcard. Whereby it's from a YouTuber. A, a YouTuber called Hikakin. So this was the sentence. And then the one word I didn't know was that. Rakka. Which means to fall down or something. And as you go through... You can see how I trash my flashcards were. Just screenshots from different um, YouTubers that I was watching. Early days of sentence mining. Didn't know too much about sentence mining and how to do it, but you know, over time they improve. One of them there. And then if I go through these, again, this is what, what year was this? 2020. If I scroll down to show you now when I started discovering audio, recording audio and everything. Okay, preview. So this is from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. You've got the sentence on the front and then the word I don't know, which was means, which is Moriagaru, which means to rouse, to, rouse, to be excited and so on. As you can see the sentence the meaning, the one word I didn't know. <laughs> Again from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. You know, and you just keep doing that. And you, all my sentences, this is in 2020 when I started learning 
doing the sentence mining method that I'm showing you right now. You know, again. Screenshot one word that I didn't understand, which is bokeh. And yeah, that's literally it. And just build up your massive deck. It's like Pokemon. You want to collect them all. Your precious Pokemon. Your precious sentences. And you just keep mining. And eventually, you eventually get fluent. But um, yeah, I think that's about it for the computer side. So now let me switch back to full screen mode. Alright, man. I'm tired of recording this video. I can't even lie to you. I just want to end it quickly now because my brain is fried. But... Um, let me just read my script. So that's it for the process. That's it for the main process on how to learn Japanese. The videos I've made up until now are the core fundamental steps that if you follow should get you to fluency. They are, okay, so they're like cake, right? The cake is made. All the videos I've, I've shown you up until now are the ingredients for you and if you do them you'll create cake a nice edible cake and now basically you've got the edible cake and um now all the videos i want to make from now on after this video are like the icing on the cake for you to get flown in japanese all you have to do is the things that i've taught you in all my videos up until now you've got an edible cake however the, the videos I'm going to make going forward are like the icing. They're just things that make the cake sweeter and nicer and prettier. And in other words, just help your journey learning Japanese a bit more smoother. Things like extra resources, extra tools and so on. Extra advice and theory and knowledge and so on. But that's it for the main sort of core videos to learn Japanese and resources and so on. Now you can just go off into the jungle and go off on your own and learn Japanese solo with all these resources that I've given you um, yeah so I hope you find it helpful leave a comment below tell give me any feedback and so on so yeah ja matane